great performance, the both of you. And I, I was watching it and thinking that for you on a day to day basis, how exhausting and famishing was it to be Freddie Mercury? I mean, doesn't he take the whole energy from you? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he takes the energy from everybody. <laughs> I, mean, I really couldn't have done it with, without Gwil and the, the rest of the cast and crew uh, lifting me up each and every single day. And, you know, I, I would look at look at Will's performance and see someone who was uh, working just as hard as I was uh, and uh, still giving me all the strength to step up and, and deliver day in and day out. So uh, like the family, uh, the message of the film, one of them is family. Uh, there was uh, very much that environment on set. And this is exactly what I loved about the film, that of course, Freddie was the center point, but it was a whole collaborative uh, 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 work. Uh, this band created magic together and mm -hmm. each one did it. How mm -hmm. much did you enjoy that aspect? Yeah, uh, it's, um, it's what makes Queen so unique, I think. Mm. Uh, Freddie's, Freddie says it towards the end of the film. It's like when he went off and tried to do his solo stuff, he wasn't getting the pushbacks from, mm. from John. He wasn't getting the mm. uh, analysis from Brian. And it's what they all had to offer as individuals. Uh, and to challenge each other is, uh, is what made them so unique, I think. In Beirut, it was all about Bohemian Rhapsody for me when I was growing up. Uh, Bismillah, we could pronounce it correctly, and I'm mm -hmm. sure you can too. Uh, what uh, Queen music did you grow up listening to, or did you? That one, Bismillah. <laughs> yeah. Bismillah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I remember hearing that song for the first time and just being so moved and taken aback by it. It was, it was like, uh, it's a feeling you get from um, watching a movie or, mm. or any other piece of art that you've sat down for for an extended period of time, except this happened in six minutes and uh, it took my breath away. Yeah, same here. Yeah. What about you? Which song really resonated the most? When I was younger, that was the tune. It was yeah. uh, Bohemian Rhapsody because it's such a journey. You start that song and you just go on this emotional roller coaster, and uh, also just the rock out section at the end, head banging in the car with my family on endless road trips mm -hmm. was always a highlight as well. How was it recreating Live Aid, uh, knowing that there weren't 70,000 people in, in that set, but uh, the energy was the same? It, it must have also been quite an endeavor. It was. That was the first thing we started with on uh, day one, which. Uh, was uh, a bit outrageous at the time, but ended up uh, kind of uh, fusing us together as a band. Um, we had quite a, a bit of fans out there, which gave us enough mm. of that spirit. I don't know if I would have wanted 10,000 people or more out there, but uh, we'd, we'd watched uh, the original version so many times and, and worked on it, rehearsed it for uh, quite, quite a while, four weeks, even longer. So to come out there and see it for the first time, the set, the stage, the, the fans uh, waiting outside was, uh, it was like peeling back the curtain and stepping out of a dream and into reality. Did Brian share how they felt that day? Because it's not only how the audience felt, it's really how they felt. They must have been baffled by themselves. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, you gotta bear in mind, they hadn't played together for a while. Yeah. Uh, they didn't know what to expect. They didn't have sound checks. No band had a sound check that day. They weren't playing on their set, on their stage with their production. It was like all was being laid out, you know, bare in front of everybody. Um, and so there was a certain amount of fear and uh, trepidation. Um, but equally, they were one of the few bands that got together and rehearsed and prepared for it. And they had played stadiums before. So uh, they knew how to, partic uh, Freddie particularly knew how to engage with 70,000 people mm. and letting every single one of those 70,000 people let think that it's, he's speaking to them individually. Mm. Uh, when you're an actor, it's a little bit of the opposite. You kind of hide behind a character. So how exposed do you feel when you have like, you know, so many people that you have to really engage with. It, it's a bit more like theater than it is like It cinema. is, yeah, and I've, I've studied theater, we both studied theater, so I think uh, it wasn't so foreign to us, but, uh, you know, it's, it's an adrenaline, adrenaline rush to be in front of the camera, but to, to be on stage uh, as a rock star is, is something completely different. What I found the most fun was in between takes, you know, wanting to keep the audience entertained, so, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's when I would do a little bit of Freddy uh, off book, so to speak. And uh, sometimes we caught it on film and a little bit of it actually makes it into the picture. How easy or difficult is it to embody somebody who was so unapologetically himself? It's, it's quite liberating, actually. You know, 
I think that's one of, another one of the messages of, of the film is just to be your most authentic self. Uh, yeah, he, he just lived his life his own way, unapologetic, as you said. He, uh, he didn't want to be uh, categorized or identified in any particular way. And uh, I think that's what we're all striving for uh, in today's society. I think it'll be a great message for generations to come. Do you think it's a message that most of the you know, cast and crew and, and Brian May want to convey to the audiences? What do you, the, the message the, of, <clears throat> of authenticity in everything? I think in art, in personality, yeah. in everything. Absolutely, I think it's something that they've put, they've made central to their identity as a band with mm. Queen is is to celebrate individuality, to celebrate yeah. uh, and not to doubt yourself, but just to commit to it and have a joy in doing so. I've always been a Freddie Mercury fan for for, for many reasons, but mm. what do you love most about him now that you've been him for a short while? I, mean, I don't want to be redundant, but I think that's it. Uh, uh, yeah. Just how how free he was, and I mean, work towards it. I think what I love is, is you know, here's this story of a, a young immigrant kid growing up in London who's uh, just try, try, well moved to London at 18 mm. from Zanzibar. Very strict uh, family. I, I can understand that and relate to that. Uh, having Egyptian parents, um, and then you know, believing in yourself and going against the grain to uh, to live out your dream is is something that I think he makes um, possibly more achievable for the world at large. I think uh, I think he he just throws his fists in the air for the dreamers, and I like to include myself, uh, both of us, in, in that. Exactly. I mean, same here, not becoming a doctor or a mohandes or a, or a, yeah. a banker or any of those are very... No. It's, not, it's not the same in England, right? You, you're, you're not expected to always yeah. like grow up to be a doctor. Or... Well, actually, my dad's a doctor, <laughs> my brother's a doctor, my sister's a nurse. Yeah. So that was probably expected of me yeah. and the disappointment of the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, <laughs> and when I told my parents I was going to be a TV presenter, it was like... Uh, Muzia, which is a bad way to say yeah. presenter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know, the music is also uh, a character, obviously, in the film. Uh, so how much music was around you all throughout filming this? It was constant, wasn't mm. it? Yeah, we'd always have we'd always have something to be working towards. So mm. we finished Live Aid. There were six songs that we performed in that, and then only a couple of weeks later, we had a whole new heap of songs to play in in the next. Uh, A, um, load of concerts and that, it just kept on coming like that so yeah. mm. in between every take we'd have guitars and, and instruments on set and we'd try and find a little space to go and practice and yeah it was constant. <laughs> and finally Rami how much would it mean to you being nominated for awards and for an Oscar for being Freddie Mercury in particular? Oh. Because I'm rooting. You're rooting. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, we all we all dream of that uh, when we're young. I think maybe not everybody, but the ultimate award is that uh, I've made it here today, and tomorrow I get to celebrate this film with Gwil, the rest of the cast, uh, the original members of Queen, in uh, Wembley at Wembley Arena, in front of an audience of you know almost seven thousand. Uh, if I want more than that, I'm, I'm asking for trouble. <laughs>